Good question. First of all, let me give you a rundown on the vapor canopy real, real fast. In a nutshell, we're going to keep it. We're going to keep it abbreviated. For those of you who don't or who don't understand vapor, the vapor canopy history, it's really simple. The Phoenix weapon, the Phoenix object in 3895 BC, caused such a cataclysm that the people who survived it actually believed that a new heavens and a new earth were created. Therefore, they started a new calendar called the Annus Mundi calendar, year of the world. They considered it was year one of a whole new world. That's how devastating it was. In the Genesis account, we are left, we are left with the express verse that says, uh, God told mankind to be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Well, replenish means to fill again, inferring in the biblical narrative in Genesis chapter 1 that the world had been totally destroyed and all the people were gone. And we see fragments of this same epic in the book of Jeremiah where there's a historical passage talking about all the animals have fled, all the people are gone, and all the cities have been destroyed. It was talking about a pre-atomic period, a period before the appearance of the vapor canopy, before the pre-flood world. Vapor canopy refers to the 1,656 years that is also recorded in Genesis as the antediluvian world, the pre-flood period. So, the great flood that happened in the days of Noah was the collapse of that canopy. That canopy was a watery mesosphere that magnified the heavens. I have talked so much about vapor canopy, I'm not going into any details in this live video. I just want to give you some background. Because there was once upon a time, not long ago, when the vapor canopy almost came back. When it collapsed, when it collapsed from the great flood, 2239 BC, it is in all the northern traditions the day the sky fell. When that occurred, civilizations were all set back. This has been scientifically verified. I released that scientific data from all the geologists, archaeologists, anthropologists, all of them that agreed, agreed on that exact date, 2240 BC, as being a total reset to every civilization on this world. You see, and it was cataclysmic. And this was decided, this was a consortium of scientists that got together and decided this in 1998. Now, I have widely published that too. So, this, uh, it took centuries for mankind to come back from that. This great flood event, which was caused by the phoenix. The vapor canopy appearing was caused by the phoenix. Now, 552 years after the great flood, in the year 1687 BC, we have a terrible series of events when the doom shape appears in the sky. Great red dragon looking thing, it drops rocks, fire, moon turns red as blood, continents split apart, whole navies just sink in the, in the water as if it wasn't able to support support the weight of ships anymore. They weren't buoyant. They just sank like stones. The Ogygian Deluge was every bit as destructive as the Great Flood. It may not have been as destructive as the, as the original well, year one, 3895 BC, but the Adam and Eve event, but it was, it was bad. And in 1687 B, 87 BC, I have two data sets that are very, very intriguing about this date. One is that in ancient American traditions, we have texts and traditions from the Americas that say that this event caused a 25-year darkness. Yes. We have ancient Ar Argos, Mycenaean, and Old Greek ancient Greek traditions that also comport with this that say what said 25 years of uh, no sun absolute darkness was over the land and that Greece was actually devastated for 189 years that's a very specific number but it says no one occupied the lands of Greece for 189 years after this devastation. But after this devastation in 1687 BC, again caused by the Phoenix and perfectly on the 138 year Phoenix timeline, just like the 3895 BC event, just like the 2239 BC great flood, and now the Ogygian delusion, 1687 BC. All of them dated by other authors, not me, by scientists that I cite. All my source materials are covered. All I did was 
find out that they're on a 138 year timeline, which is very interesting because ancient Jewish traditions in the Haggadah say that the angel of death visits our world and destroys things every 138 years. That's a data point. Now, both hemispheres agree that at this event there was a 25 year darkness, but we have something additional to add to this that's very intriguing. What that is, in the writings of Hesiod, 800 BC, we have the same system we, had, we found with Sankoniathin, the same system we found in the Mayan Popol Vu, the, the uh, uh, Kimalapoca old Aztec text, uh, Mayan records, the same four age system. Some of them say it's gold, silver, bronze, and iron. That's all. That's in the biblical, but it's also in, in secular histories. But it's always four ages, like in the ancient Americans. It's four suns, water sun, I forgot, all different four suns. It's four ages after the great flood every single time. And it always happens with the appearance of the sun, because the sun had never was never seen before. During the vapor canopy world, there was no sun. The sun was there, but it was above the canopy. <coughs> And the, the mesosphere, the light diffraction caused by the mesosphere, just it, it deflected away the light. No one underneath the canopy could pinpoint where the sun was. The sun wasn't even important. But at nighttime, you could see the stars and the moon because it acted like a magnifier. And it was an absolute, absolute, absolute brilliant view of the heavens. Now, great flood, sky collapsed, all of a sudden the sun's burning. And all of a sudden, all these different calendar systems are now... The sun's important, not the moon. All these religions now, the sun, oh, God is the sun of righteousness. God is the great day star. God is all these things. He never was those things before. Under the vapor canopy, it was all about the moon and the matriarchy. Now, <clears throat> but we have something very curious in the writings of Hesiod that has always troubled me until I, until I found these references to the 25-year darkness. Phoenix caused the vapor canopy and Phoenix destroyed the vapor canopy, but in 1687 BC, a new Phoenix destruction almost brought it back. See, a vapor canopy is caused by a unique condition. That condition is also very unique to the Phoenix, Phoenix phenomenon. The Phoenix phenomenon has always caused massive amounts of volcanism. When Phoenix appears in the sky, it seems like volcanoes everywhere are just spewing forth all these gases. Now, in 1902, which was a phoenix year, when many people died in red mud, red skies, moon turned red, all kinds of things happened in 1902. Very interesting things. 30,000 people were incinerated by Mount Pele, a volcano on, on the island of Martinique in the French Caribbean, 1902. On that island, though, two, two scientists have been doing a bunch of research, and, and they, they discovered that ambient radiation that emanates from volcanoes causes giantism. As proof of this, both of these scientists grew two inches. These men were in their 50s and 60s. Now, that changes everything and it makes us understand that in the pre-flood world, why trees were bigger, why animals were bigger, why amphibians and reptiles and fish and everything was bigger, why giants existed. And, I, and for those of you who are interested, you can go back and watch my other videos and I explain to you the difference between titans and giants. Under the vapor canopy, it was all about titans, but they were normal to themselves. They didn't consider themselves as gigantic. It wasn't until after the collapse of the vapor canopy that, the, that these titans gave birth to sons and daughters under a new biosphere. The sun was now in the sky. People were born much smaller, but their parents were titans. These were the giants. And for about a hundred years, people, were, people didn't really think it was, it, it, it was a big deal that their sons and daughters were much smaller than them. However, something else happened. When the giants, the sons and daughters of the Titans, began intermarrying and, and producing children, normal humans, our size, popped out. So now, within 200 to 250 years after the collapse of the vapor canopy, we have existing on the Earth, all at the exact same time, are titans of a heroic size. Giants, which were smaller, but still way bigger than normal humans. This is the background to the Sumerian, Akkadian, Rashamur, Ugaritic, ancient Israelite and Egyptian traditions. This is why you see size differences in all these ancient reliefs uh, when it depicting different people. It's exactly why. A new biosphere brought a new genome. 